A spell appears to have failed. Well, what do you wish to say? Whoa, oh, my poor wayward William. He was snatched away by the wicked Winter King and whisked into a wild world of whirling snow. I wonder, would you be willing to take a whack at bringing Willie back? I would weep wishes for weeks if I could see him again. I can teleport you to the Winterland right now. Give Willie my regards. Send him my good wishes. Now, wave. Bye-bye. Apart by a wicked wretch. Simply wonderful. The spell, it's working. This well is being willed back to Cecile. Will you visit Wally and I again? Oh, wisest wanderer, we weep with joy to witness your return. We'll meet again, wanderer. We will. You went and whisked Willy back to Wally. Wow! Whip out your wallet and wing a bit of gold my way, and I'll wow you in return. This well wishes to work his magic. What would you like to wish, our most willing friend? Decide how much you're willing to spare, and I'll will you something wondrous in accordance. Wow! What have we here? What wealth? Please, enjoy your reward. Your goddess above, have you ever seen a creature more pathetic than Fumble? <laughs> Indeed I haven't, good for nothing troll. Just stands there and mopes like a mule. Remember when that redhead used to come by and cheer him up? <laughs> oh yeah. You know, I bet she was just feeling sorry for that whiny lump of toll taking fat. Troll Toll! Troll Toll, if you please. It may be pointless, life may be pointless, but the toll needs to be paid. How could it be? My life is like the bridge behind me. It goes nowhere. Loneliness such as this, how it weighs, how it burdens. Dear me, why? I stand here day and night. Humans hate me, for I must take their gold for no good reason at all. Even among my own, I find no companionship. Troll toll is all they think about. Once, though, I was happy. A girl, one of your very own kind, used to pass by daily. She was bright and young and gay. She smiled. She bade me good morning. She told me about the dreams that had come to her in the night. But then she left for a faraway land. She is gone, and I have been lonely ever since. Oh, if only a jolly young girl would come to talk to me once more. It's all the goblins' fault. They cut the ropes to prevent you humans from going to the mines below. Ropeless, pointless, and yet I must cry for toll. We ask for toll because our king commands us to. He is mad for gold. All his senses crave it. Gold is his life, and therefore it is my life too. Even though I care more for the daisies in the fields than I could ever care for cold, dead metal, no matter how pretty its luster. He is the king of Lucula Forest, and a most formidable troll indeed. I do not even like to talk about him, for fear he might find out and crush my skull like a walnut. Archibald, though, 
Archibald may be willing to speak. His fine mind makes him bold. Find Archibald, a proud troll and troll father, if you wish to know about the king. One thousand gold coins, such is the toll I must ask. So, let's have the troll toll, if you please. No, oh, we're not going to pay to cross a broken bridge. Indeed we are not. The mere notion is absurd. So you will not pay? I can hardly blame you. Though the rules of toll-taking trolls stipulate I must club you to death for your refusal. I shall not do so. What, I wonder, would be the point? Leave me. Like she left me, my bonny lass. Would that another would come. Would that another would come and ask, How are you, Fumble? Have you ever seen a creature more pathetic than Fumble? Next time you fumble? must introduce me to your <laughs> handsome I friend. His must troll. dominate the Just breeze most pleasingly. Excuse me. you, young to come lady. By and cheer him no up. comrade of mine oh, is bringing yeah. a troll to the campfire. Well, I've got, got air in my lungs. She's sorry for that whiny lump of troll taking fat. Don't you stay a while, darling. I just know I could take you on a wild ride if you... Oh, that world weary face is giving me shivers. What you say we take a load off together? I do suppose I could find some way to entertain you. Is he... Is he a gentle troll? Would he benefit from my particular expertise, you think? It is strange, but, um, well, if you're willing to pay me on behalf of your toll-taking friend, I'll be glad to keep him company. I do believe 2,050 gold should cover it. Well, I sure ain't romancing a troll for less sweetheart. Who knows what sort of depraved requests he might make. Oh, is he... is he a gentle troll? And I'll take that gold. <laughs> Cheers, darling. Well, I guess I'll be off to visit Mr. Troll then. He's the one closest to town, yeah? At least I won't have to run far if he gets too fidgety. <laughs> See you around, sweetheart. Praise the goddess. So unless I'm very much mistaken, we just paid a courtesan to cheer up a lonely troll. What's wrong with that? The fellow needed cheering and that's what she'll do. Still, I don't feel quite comfortable about all this. Frankly, it creeps me out. So she asked, Granny, why do you have such large and hairy ears? To which Granny replied, Why? So that I can hear you better, my dear. No, be careful, be little red riding hood. <laughs> oh, the nasty wolf. Your ear we are. We only have ourselves for company. Friend, champion of my heart, I cannot describe my rapture. A ruby you have brought me, more precious than any other on this earth. Happiness, he has returned in all his sunny glory. 
for this unparalleled service, I must repay you. Have it back. The fee you paid on my behalf. Let sordid gold not stand between our friendship. My thanks. Oh, champion of my soul, my undying thanks. I'm kind of in the middle of something here, sugar. Hmm, Fumble just can't get enough of my... stories. <laughs> Such a sweet old thing he is. The poor darling fell all alone in the wide world, but now he's pleased as peppers. And to say true, I am too. The best of chums? And she stand there and the that Troll toll! Pay the toll, human, or I'll squeeze you like a a, a funny yellow fruit. I am grumble. And when I roar. The birds take flight. The airs head for the horizon. The goblins pray to their totems, and the earth itself thinks it's about to quake. So be forthcoming, human, or my roar will shatter your eardrums, and you will meet your death in crushing silence. Broken? What rot? The bridge is perfectly fine. Sturdy as if it was built yesterday. Oh, but you're trying to be clever, aren't you? You want me to turn so you can run without paying. Your tricks won't work, human. Pay, or I'll grind you like pepper. We troll are told because our king commands it. All hail the king! You are unworthy to hear of the king. You must pay to walk his lands, but you must not make him the topic of idle conversation. in a great cave here in the woods, by the canyon that leads to the mine. But a mere wanderer won't find him so easily. The cave is here, yeah, but its true nature lies in the realm of fairy. Enter if you must, but only stone will greet you. Magic is needed to see the king. But I have no end for magic. Ask one of the other trolls. Ask Archibald. He's the one with brains, that one. He knows that three and five make. Uh, uh, uh. What three and five make? Yeah, uh, ask him. A thousand gold coins buys you passage. Refuse, and I'll pound you so deep into the ground. The moles will take you for one of their own. I think not, troll. Let's see what kind of stuff you're made of. Let's teach this here troll there's no money to be had from us. <laughs> Those who refuse are my favourites. Time to wrench the life from your weak little frame. Targeted power. I strike the full force of my convictions. Enjoying the afternoon sun. 
I'll bet we can slip by while his back is turned. Better to avoid a conflict now than to have to face every goblin from here to the mine. Yes, but I think there is more to it than meets the eye. when they're asleep. Perhaps if I'm quiet, they'll stay that way. I don't have the right tool for mining.
your business, Snipe Face. Isn't it, though? We haven't seen Trexus in days. Ah, oh, he's just fine. I swear by the conduit. Maybe he just got sick of hanging around with simpletons. Yes, bite your tongue, pigskin, or I'll do you the honor myself. Oh, will ye now? And what if I don't protest? Yes. Shut your vile hole and answer me straight. Where is Drexus? <laughs> ho, ho! Quite feisty, ain't ya? Listen close, then. I ain't telling. I've spotted something interesting. We made it. I wonder what we'll find in here, besides Immaculates. Why don't you be my canary and go find out? First goblins, then cultists. Who's going to take over this mine next? Crab soldiers? Psst! Over here! Come over here quickly, but be as quiet as a mouse. What are you waiting for? Come here, but for the love of the gods, be still. I can't believe it. I never thought I'd see another human face uncorrupted by immaculate madness. I hid when I heard your voice, but you don't look like the lunatics here that slave the dead. Will I escape this infernal pit after all? Will I escape the dreaded Hell Lords? I'm Mykes, a craftsman from Hunter's Edge, a village some miles to the east of here. Orcs raided our town and sold us to the goblins as slaves. Little did we know that they were to pass us on to the remorseless necromancers here in the mines. Yeah, you heard me right. Necromancers. My family, my friends, they were all turned into undead slaves by those most deviant of sorcerers and forced to unearth Tenebrium. I managed to escape in the darkness of the tunnels and was just about to head for the daylight when I heard you approach. Because of the Tenebrium, of course. That stuff will give you rot right quickly, and after that, rot will kill you right slowly. But if you're naught but a skeleton with a pickaxe, what then? Rock can't touch you, can it? So that's what they do, the vile maniacs. They procure people, slaughter them, and wrench their souls back from the shores of death to mine the days away. I don't even know why they do it. Tenebrium. It blights all that it touches. Good for nothing is what it is. The worst. I can't imagine a crueler death. They say some genius up in Silverglen first hired the goblins to clear away Tenebrium when his miners started to fall ill. Them nasty critters are immune to its contagion, they said. What nonsense! The goblins aren't immune at all. They just wanted to take possession of the mine. Their chief, a, a sickening brute called Sadakandras, simply forced everyone out. Those who put up a struggle were speared and sacrificed to goblin totems. Then, away from prying eyes, the Immaculates moved in, and the undead horror began. Those fools of goblins don't even realize they're no more than cogs in the Immaculate machine. Why, I've even seen a number of them held as prisoners just a corridor away. Soon they'll be no more than skeletal slaves. You make it sound like a carnival dropped by. Carnage, more like. Mayhem and death, that's what the orcs spread. 
To think we thought ourselves lucky they didn't eat us all on the spot, but rounded us up to be sold into slavery. We escaped certain death only to face certain deathlessness. Talk about your rock and a hard place. By the seven, I don't know. Never have I seen anything like them. They're creatures dressed in knight's armor that's black as coal. The very ground trembles when they approach and their eyes shine with demon mania. To even think about them is to struggle with almost irrepressible panic. What about them? I'm afraid I've been navigating these mine shafts rather like a fish out of water. All I can do is advise you to leave and don't look back. But if you're determined to push on, be warned that a handful of immaculates is the least of your worries. The necromancers weave powerful magic, and as I fled, I nearly ran into one of the Hell Lords. Had it seen me, had I met its eyes, I know I'd have gone mad. I, I, I looked away and, and, and ran as fast as I could. Only darkness awaits you here, the dark and the dead. Indeed, bunch of loons. I haven't the foggiest what their plans are, but it has nothing to do with mining for silver, and that's a goddamn certainty. Them and their goddess lording ways seem to have taken hold in Silver Glen. But I bet the people there have no idea what the boys high up, or, or should I say down low in the mines, are really plotting. Curse their ignorance and curse their gullibility. Immaculates, the real ones I mean, the ones in power, they are setting something in motion that I hope to be far, far away from when that something finally rears its head. As will I. It's just that I'm torn. Should I hang low right here just a little bit longer, or should I make a run for it? What, 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 do, you, what do you think? Better hang low. The woods aren't exactly safe. Indeed they aren't, but nothing will harm you here. You'd hide, would you? Yeah, I guess that's what I'll do then. But... but wait a moment. Who's that you've got with you? Medora, is that you? Found another group of dupes to betray, have you? But can it really be you? Something's different. You've recognized her rightly. That's Medora indeed. The one and only. Ah, so it is you, you chicken-livered craven. Rolled out the map for the orcs in Hunter's Edge and come to do the same for the Hell Lords here, is that it? And your face. Looks like one of the townsfolk sliced you up before you managed to sell them to Grutilda, eh? Well, to hell with you. At least do me one courtesy. Keep my position here quiet, will you? God damn you besides. Careful, comrade. I think I sense a sorcerer in yonder shadows. He's one of the many I let down that terrible night, comrade. But I'll tell you this. He's one of the last. I'll avenge all of them before my time's through. You mark my words. Ask away, my friend. Ask away. Always helps to know a thing or two about who's covering your back against the gnashing hordes, eh? Look at these skeletons just chipping away at the rock perpetually. With that same thousand-yard stare you get when trying to do arithmetic. These undead are completely unresponsive. I smell foul magic. I reckon you're right. This is necromancy to be sure. Dear gods! So this is what's become of the villagers? This is their fate? Death. 
You we can slice, dice, and feed to the idol of oblivion. appeals to the goddess brothers sheathe your weapons we have found ourselves an ally through sorcery strength through blood benediction long live the conduit she who speaks for the goddess Together we stand against the armored death! It is an altar of sorts, laced with powerful magic that allows us to control the undead that roam these tunnels. They are all slaves brought in from the hamlet of Hunter's Edge. First we ritually slaughter them, then bind them to the idol made with their own bones. You may approach the idol with reverence, but be careful not to touch it. Our control of these skeletal miners has been tentative ever since the Armored Death has been on the loose. Its sorceries vastly outstrip our own. I don't know how long we've been hiding here in the dark, clinging to the refuge of our idol like freezing wastelanders round a flame. When first we heard the fiend approach, we thought the mine was collapsing, but no! We looked into the burning eyes of death. Many fell so that we could flee and hide and pray. Where it came from, we do not know. There might even be more than one, judging by the tremors. Goddess, protect us when they find us. May the conduit save us yet. It's heating up. Glory be unto the conduit. For she will save us from the armored death. Glory be unto the goddess if we are not saved, for our souls will flock towards her. Dragon's breath. I suppose this is the idol of oblivion, or the god of mad cows. Do not defile our idol, you heathen! Looks like we gave this chap some bad advice after all. At least he wasn't turned into an undead. That's something, no? We'll skin you all alive, we will. Release us, you filth! Curses of the spirit strike you down! <gasps> Vile human scum! Sadakandras will hear a filthy, immaculate betrayal. He will put you all up on a pole and let it slide slowly into your bowels uh, until your screams of agony will rid the forest of all that lives. So terrified will be even the worm that crawls and the bird that flies. That does not matter, little louse. All humans will suffer the wrath of the totems for the shame that has befallen us. I am Drexis, favored of totems. Were that I had my spear, this mine would be a blood spattered waste if I were free. Not even the tremor demons could stop me. He is the chief of our tribe's seat, the greatest of goblins alive. 
For the promise that hides in bloodstone does he follow the human female they call conduit. She has his respect. All others have but his contempt. The slavers may their bones splinter inside their living flesh. They lured us in here. They said they had found an ancient totem, but that was a lie! They need more slaves to unearth Tenebrium. So soon they shall give us to the necromancers. Let them come. I shall claw their eyeballs from their skulls for their trespass and shove them down their throats. If my nose does not betray me, and it never does, they have been forged in blood. The power of the bloodstone runs through them, the blood of a thousand spirits. They course through the stones that they hold, through the living rock. Blood, 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 in blood the spirits roam free! Lawrence? <laughs> Leave it to that coward to send another to do his dirty work. I thank you for telling me, human. To Lawrence I shall go after I escape from this cell and show him the tricks I can do with a knife. <sighs> Got you right where I want you. 